The excitement of starting your very own business and the beliefs of your success are high when you're first starting your business. You think about what you want to sell, how you'll sell it, the marketing, and just how much your business is needed in the marketplace. You might have started an online business. You could be a course creator. You might have decided to be a small business coach, life coach, virtual assistant, bookkeeper, podcast manager, or other service-based or product-based business. Whatever the business you started, you were pumped and had no reason to doubt that your business would be anything but a big success. But then something doesn't go the way you originally planned, and you begin to doubt if your business will be successful. You wonder if you made a big mistake, or you may have self-doubt kicking in, and you wonder if you're even the right person to have started this business in the first place. We've all been there, but how do you keep up your positivity and belief that your business will be successful when you start having these doubts? In today's episode, I'm talking about what can happen when you have these doubts and what you can do to continue to not only believe in the success of your business, but believe in yourself as well. I want to make sure that you continue to hold on to the excitement you once had for your business and what you can do each and every day to make sure that you don't lose that insight. Listen in to today's episode, especially if you're getting ready to start your small business, you're a solopreneur, entrepreneur, small business owner, virtual online bookkeeper, or virtual assistant, and make sure you are following these important steps to ensure the continued success of your business. You're listening to the Mastering Your Small Business Finances podcast, where we get straight to the point on topics that ultimately affect your bottom line. That's right, as an entrepreneur with a small business, money management, growth, marketing, they all affect your bottom line. I'm your host, Chris Ponick. I'm a certified public accountant, and I've been helping small business owners like you navigate and easily understand these complicated topics for over 25 years. I'm a wife, a mom, a grandmother, and a small business owner myself, so I know your time is valuable. In my free time, I make the best sugar cookies and have mastered an amazing chocolate chip cookie recipe. And that's not just my opinion. You're in the right place. I promise your time will be well spent here. Each week you'll gain confidence and clarity while making a successful impact on your business and grow your bottom line. Get comfy, grab a cookie, and let's get straight to the point with this week's episode. Are you looking for a computerized software solution to do your bookkeeping? I highly recommend checking out QuickBooks Online. I've been using QuickBooks myself for over 20 years, and they really know how to streamline processes and make your bookkeeping and recording your transactions simple and easy. QuickBooks is one of the top software solutions used by small business owners, and I would say that over 95% of my clients are currently using QuickBooks for their businesses. One of the features most of my clients and I take advantage of is the option to set up bank feeds. You simply link your bank account to your QuickBooks account and QuickBooks will automatically import each transaction into your QuickBooks file. You'll save a ton of time not having to manually enter each of these transactions. You simply review each of the transactions and make sure they're getting recorded to the appropriate account. And then click one button and they're in. Want to know more? Head over to financialadventure.com slash QuickBooks and learn how you can save 50% off of your first three months. Welcome back. You might not realize it, but your small business may seem a little like dating. You might be thinking, Chris, my business is nothing like dating. But think about it for a little bit. When you start dating, you're full of excitement. You think everything is perfect and that nothing could go wrong. Your first dates are full of suspense and learning about the person you're dating. These are all feelings that you could have when you start a business. After all, your business is a relationship. You are going to have this relationship for a long time, and you want to make sure that you're nurturing it just like you would nurture a relationship if you were dating. What do you do when the initial excitement goes away? When you start to feel a little bored 
or even if you're wondering if this business is right for you. Today, I'm going to talk about how you can continue to believe in your business as well as believing in yourself to keep up the momentum you had when you first decided to start your business. Think about why you wanted to start your business in the first place. If you're like many entrepreneurs, you had a great idea and you knew you had the knowledge and skills to get your business up and running. I think understanding your why is important when you're just getting your business up and running, but more importantly, I believe you need to have that why front and center so that you are consistently reminding yourself why you wanted to start your business in the first place. Did you hope to make an impact on certain individuals? Did you need to create some extra income for yourself? Did you want to leave a 9 to 5 so that you could spend more time with your family? Were you at retirement age, but you still wanted to pursue your lifelong dream? Whatever your reason, write it down and keep it somewhere where you can refer back to it often. You want to consistently work towards your why to make sure that you're staying on track. Next, think about how you personally affected your business and what knowledge and skills you brought to the business. One of the big reasons people stop believing in the success of their business is a direct reflection on themselves. Maybe you thought at the beginning of starting your business, you had all the skills you needed to make this business grow and be successful. If you are now doubting yourself and you wonder if you are the right person, dig deep and ask yourself if there's something you need to improve on, if you need to hire additional help, or if you actually have all the skills but you are just starting to let self-doubt creep in. If you find doubt setting in, look deep within to see where this disbelief is coming from. One of the best ways to be successful in your business is to just be yourself. You will attract customers who are interested in the real you. People can sense when someone isn't being genuine or when they're trying to be someone else. If you have thoughts of others who specialize in the same business as you, as being better than you or more successful, don't let these negative thoughts hinder how you will show up for your customers and your followers. There will always be competition, but you need to know what sets you apart from all the others and know that this is why your business will be successful and why your customers will trust you for who you are. When you reflect back on why you wanted to start your business, you can also reflect on your values and why you believe in yourself as well. If you find you are struggling and don't have the strengths in certain areas of your business, you may need to hire someone to help in these areas. Don't forget that there are options out there such as hiring a virtual assistant or a bookkeeper to help you in areas you struggle with. Success also means you are continuously learning. You may need to brush up on a few skills to help knock out your self-doubt. When you continue to move forward, you will be successful. Your goal is to thrive in the areas of your business where you have strengths and to continue to move your business forward without getting stuck with work that you simply don't have any passion for. When you first started your business, you probably believed that anything is possible. You can continue with this belief as long as you know that you are determined to do whatever it takes to achieve success. You know that hard work will pay off eventually. You may need some additional patience, but you will definitely see the success from the effort you put into your business. Don't let this scare you. When you originally started your business, you were willing to do anything to get your business up and running. This is the same concept here. One additional thing to note is to not let yourself get too bogged down with perfectionism. If you wait until everything is perfect, you may never move forward. I love this saying, done is better than perfect. I'll be the first to admit that it's hard to do when you're a perfectionist, but if being perfect is holding the success of your business back, you may want to think about this and try to keep moving forward. Make sure that you're setting goals. If you don't have a goal set, how will you know that you're being successful? If you don't know if you're successful, how will you be able to continue to believe that your business is successful? When you first started your business, you probably had plenty of first goals to meet. Make sure that after you meet these goals, you have something to reach for in the future. 
Be determined to reach those goals so that your business continues to be successful. Make sure that you take every experience that you have encountered and turn it into an opportunity to grow your business. Take pride in what you have achieved. If you have a hard time doing this, make an accomplishments board or compile a list of all of your achievements and keep them on your phone so that you can look at them from time to time and see exactly how far you and your business have come. When you're consistently reaching for the next goal, it can be hard to remember all of the achievements that you've achieved along the way. When you have a failure in your business, you may want to only focus on this problem, or you may believe that you're not being successful due to the failure. Failing at certain things will only help you to learn and move forward to the next step. Look at the big picture and learn from your mistakes. Know that you're doing your best and reflect on how far you've come. Whether you're just one month into your business or you've been in business for many years, not believing in your business or consuming yourself with self-doubt will surely present itself in everything you do in your business. People will naturally gravitate towards others who are confident and have a sense of purpose. You must overcome your mindset. Visualize what success is to you and your business every single day. Remember your why. Be yourself and move your business forward with confidence. These qualities will help you believe in your business and will help you achieve the success you're striving for. I'm excited to announce that I just opened enrollment for my Elevate Your Bookkeeping Business framework this week, but enrollment is only open for a few days. If you're thinking about starting a bookkeeping business, or if you have an existing bookkeeping business, you can sign up for my four-step framework for creating a profitable bookkeeping business masterclass, and you'll receive my masterclass action guide just for registering. With this framework, you will gain the confidence, skills, and knowledge to create a profitable bookkeeping business in three months or less without feeling alone, overwhelmed, or confused about your next steps. You'll also have the opportunity to join my Elevated Bookkeepers Inner Circle. As a bookkeeper, you want to make sure that you have reliable resources to help maintain a profitable bookkeeping business. And with my Elevated Bookkeepers Inner Circle, you'll have lots of support from me as well as access to a community of other bookkeepers just like you. You can register for the masterclass by going to financialadventure.com slash masterclass registration. I'll post a link where you're listening to this podcast for you to sign up as well. All right, to recap this episode. Number one, your business may seem a little like dating. When you start dating, you're full of excitement, you think everything is perfect and that nothing could go wrong. Your first dates are full of suspense and learning about the person you're dating. These are all feelings that you could also have when you start a business. Number two, you are going to have this business relationship for a long time and you want to make sure that you're nurturing it just like you would nurture a relationship if you were dating. Number three, think about why you wanted to start your business in the first place. Understanding your why is important when you are just getting your business up and running. But more importantly, I believe you need to have that why front and center so that you are consistently reminding yourself of why you wanted to start your business in the first place. Number four, whatever your why is, write it down and keep it somewhere where you can refer back to it often. Number five, one of the big reasons people stop believing in the success of their business is a direct reflection on themselves. If you are now doubting yourself and you wonder if you're the right person to be in charge of your business, Dig deep and ask yourself if there is something you need to improve on. Look within to see where this disbelief is coming from. Number six, one of the best ways to be successful in your business is to just be yourself. You will attract customers who are interested in the real you, and people can sense when someone isn't being genuine or when they're trying to be someone else. Number seven, you can reflect on your values and think about why you believed in yourself at the beginning of starting your business. Number eight, when you continue to move forward, you will be successful. 
Your goal is to thrive in the areas of your business where you have strengths and to continue to move your business forward without getting stuck with work that you simply do not have any passion for. Number nine, when you first started your business, you believed that anything was possible. You can continue with this belief as long as you know that you are determined to do whatever it takes to achieve success. Number 10. Do not let yourself get too bogged down with perfectionism. If you wait until everything is perfect, you may never move forward. Done is better than perfect. If being perfect is holding the success of your business back, you may want to think about this and try to keep moving forward. Number 11. Make sure that you're setting goals. If you don't have a goal set, how will you know that you are being successful? Make sure that after you meet these goals, you have something to reach for in the future. Be determined to reach these goals so that your business continues to be successful. Number 12. Take pride in what you have achieved. Make an accomplishments board or compile a list of your achievements and keep them on your phone so that you can look at them from time to time and see exactly how far you and your business have come. Number 13. When you have a failure in your business, you may want to only focus on this problem or you may believe that you are not being successful due to this failure. Failing at certain things will only help you to learn and move forward to the next step in your business. Look at the big picture and learn from your mistakes. Reflect on how far you've come. Number 14. You must overcome your mindset. Visualize what success is to you and your business every single day. Remember your why, be yourself, and move your business forward with confidence. And you know I'm going to ask, what's at least one thing you'll take away from this episode that will help your business succeed and grow your bottom line? If you need some accountability, join our private Facebook community and post your action item. We'd love to support you. Thanks for taking the time to tune into this episode of Mastering Your Small Business Finances. If you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed creating it for you, I'd love for you to give it a five-star rating and subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. Visit financialadventure.com for the show notes, links from this episode, and while you're there, leave a comment if you have a topic you're interested in learning more about that affects your bottom line. If you're looking for a community where you can ask questions and get feedback about your small business, join my private Facebook group. You can find the links to this group and more on financialadventure.com. And remember, any financial information shared on this podcast is not to be considered professional, financial, or tax advice and should not be solely relied upon. Please consult your CPA or tax advisor for an opinion on your specific circumstances. I'm looking forward to having you tune in next time. Until then, dream big, follow your heart, and love what you do.